There were students who felt like I did. And when I found them, they loved the fact that I took interest in them. These were the students who came back and looked for me the next week because I talked to them and I remembered their name. Every youth ministry has unconnected students. If you don't have them at your weekly meetings, you'll have them at your special events when their parents drop them off and they don't know anyone. It's great to focus on a few, but relational youth workers keep their eyes open. Number five is relational youth workers write letters. One of my leaders once asked, if I could do one thing in youth ministry outside of my small group, what would you like me to do? I immediately responded by saying, write students letters. Kids love to get mail. My three children are young, and they follow me to the mailbox, and they ask, Dad, is anything for me? I usually say, yes. Here you go, occupant and resident and cardi sort. You see, when a student gets mail from someone who cares about them, that letter becomes a trophy. They save it. A handwritten, personalized letter is a big deal to a student. Now, I'm not talking about the type of letter that takes hours to write. I'm talking about the type of letter that says something like, Hey, I drove by your school today, and I prayed for you. I'm so thankful that I get to see you every week. I look forward to see what God is going to do in your life. Love, Doug. That's it. A short letter communicates concern. Write them, and I guarantee you'll see the return on your time investment. Number six, relational youth workers maximize their limited time. Most youth workers I know are juggling so many responsibilities in their lives that time is their biggest hurdle to feeling good about what they do. In my book, Help, I'm a Volunteer Youth Worker, I have a short chapter titled, Something is Better Than Nothing. I get a lot of response by that because many leaders heap guilt on themselves because they feel that they're not doing enough. And since there's always more to do in youth ministry, it's easy to feel guilty. But the truth to combat your guilt should be this statement. Something is better than nothing. You see, before we had any children, my wife was an incredible youth worker. When we had one child, she was a great youth worker. With two children, she became a good youth worker. And now that we have three children, she would describe herself as a youth worker. You see, her time is limited and drained by three small children. It's hard for her to care for girls in the youth ministry when she's always on the go with our kids. So what do we do when our lives come to this? Well, relational youth workers maximize their limited time. For example, when my wife goes shopping, she takes nearby high school girls from our youth ministry with her. The girl loves spending time with my wife. My children love hanging around the teenager. And my wife is investing in this girl's life by hanging out with her. That's maximizing her limited time. Some of the best times I've had with students happen during my informal moments, not the formal times when I meet students in my office. My favorite times have happened while doing errands. I never do errands alone. <laughs> in my book, Purpose Driven Youth Ministry, I refer to discipleship as building dog houses. I relate a story of building a dog house with a student from my group. Years later, he remembered more from that time together than any Bible study I ever taught. <laughs> now, that, that hurts just a little. But this student was impacted by us spending an entire Saturday together building a dumb doghouse. So look for those informal times to spend time with students and stop feeling guilty. I know one youth worker who carries note cards in his briefcase and writes students encouraging letters while he's waiting at different places throughout the week. I was at the DMV last week, and if I'd have thought about that, I could have written an entire book. You get the idea. Relational youth workers maximize their limited time. Number seven, relational youth workers ask good questions and remember conversations. I found that a lot of youth workers struggle after asking a few basic questions. After they've asked, what school do you go to and what grade are you in, they're usually stuck. A relational youth worker learns to talk to students by getting to know them. Just the other day, we were coming back from a youth ministry event, and I had four students in my car, and one of them I didn't know. Before I could even ask her any questions, she poured it on me. She asked me about my family, my past, my favorite type of music, why I was in ministry, what I like to do with my children. And then she followed up her questions with more probing questions. Man, she was good. Most students aren't like her. Actually, many of my students don't talk. They grunt. But with this girl, I felt like she genuinely cared about me. I like that. She definitely had learned a skill, and I got to be on the receiving side of it. It reminded me how much people like to talk about themselves. An added element to asking questions is remembering a student's answer and then following up on it the next time you see them. For example, hey, how did that test go that you were so concerned about? How was your game? Did you get to play? 
Hey, I prayed for you this week about your family situation. How's it going? 